I didn't vote for Starmer, but people who did, and I think just the country as a whole, would just like to, just for him to be completely transparent. For all adults, um, those who voted um, should be able to hear what, what is actually happening in government. So it'd be very refreshing if you can be as honest as possible. I've got two kids going back to school, so it'd be, um, you know, I'd love a bit of positivity and rainbows and sunshine, but we're all living. We, we don't need him to, you know, put any um, clouds and rainbows on anything. We all know that food is more expensive, things are, things are expensive and things are tough. So if you can just be honest, um, I think that would be really greatly appreciated. Anita, can I put to you what another one of our listeners has said in a text? It's Paul in Bournemouth. And he's texted in to say, let's face it, if Labour would have been honest and said they were going to put taxes up, they wouldn't have been voted in blaming a lack of visibility. In other words, a visibility over uh, the true state of the public finances was always the plan. So Paul in Bournemouth uh, definitely thinks this was part of a more cynical plan by Labour. What's your view on that? I actually agree with Paul. And I think it's... um it's, um, I'm getting, I mean, I'm not <laughs> majorly political, but I'm not getting good vibes from Starmer and his and his cabinet. And it's, um, I think as a country, we've been through a lot. Um, and a small part of me thought, yep, change would be great. And it'd be great to have this new leader. But it's, the things that are coming out are not filling me with joy whatsoever. So if, if at the very least he can just be honest and transparent, that will be something. Um, but yeah, I just, I just hope he has, you know, everyday Joe's best interests at heart, but that's not coming across so much to me at the moment. So you'll take honesty and transparency in a speech that is warning you things are going to get worse before they get better over what you've already seen thus far from the government? Yeah, it's not, I mean, I don't want to be too much of a Debbie Downer myself, but things aren't just, you know, we can see with our own eyes what we can see, what we're feeling, the pinch in the purse. Um, especially when you have a young family, it's it's pretty tough. Um, so I don't have much hope in him. But if he can be honest and transparent about what's what's happening with the with the finances of the country, it'll go a long way towards um, just building a bit of trust. I think between government and everyday people. But Anita, can I ask you? Do you think that the job of the prime minister is also partly? Uh, a responsibility to gin people up and tell them not to panic and tell them they're going to they're going to weather this and they're going to get through it. I mean, there is a there is a role there in terms of uh, sort of playing things up in terms of improving the national psyche, isn't there? I hear what you're saying. He's just not that kind of leader, is he? He doesn't strike me as somebody who's particularly visionary or upbeat. He's is a very kind of um, you know. I wouldn't say, yeah, kind of, you know, I don't know how to say it, but he does, he's not like upbeat, buoyant, you know, mm-hmm. kind of a visionary kind of leader. He's not, he's, I don't think people are expecting that from him. I think just a bit of, uh, um, we're all adults, tell us what's going on and, you know, we can make plan for our futures and our families' futures accordingly. So I'm just totally disgusted uh, with the way he's moved the goalposts in such a short period of time. You've got to remember he's been elected for what? He's been prime minister for 50, 60 days, uh, what he's done to the pensioners is absolutely scandalous. Uh, I think there's going to be more coming out in the uh, uh, presentation or whatever he does tomorrow at Parliament. Uh, I didn't vote uh, Labour, and I'm so glad that I didn't. Uh, I think this is going to... You mentioned earlier about being a gloom of Britain. This has been the worst gloom I've ever known. He's, he, and I think he's going to go down in such a short period as the worst Prime Minister. He's divided the nation completely over the riots, etc., which I, I know the topic of conversation is about that. But what he's done is such a short period of time. I'm just ashamed. I'm but, ashamed but, he's our Prime Minister. And first and foremost, he's a prosecutor. He's not a Prime Minister. Well, he was a prosecutor. He was the Director of Public Prosecutions, but he is now the Prime Minister. John, let me push back at you, though. I mean, if you do take over in the government and you discover a $22 billion hole in the public finances that you didn't know about uh, and you accept that the country needs to be prepared for potentially years of slow recovery economically... Is it not more honest and uh, a mark of integrity to tell people what is actually happening rather than to pretend everything's all going to be sunny and uh, within a matter of uh, uh, weeks, if not months, everything's going to start looking up? 
Mark, I agree with you that honesty is the best policy. However, I do feel that uh, there's been certain things that he has lied and misled the public about. And the prime example of this, which most of the callers have mentioned and referenced tonight, is the uh, winter fuel allowance, mm-hmm. which he, did, he said three, four months ago that he would not cut that as, as the Conservatives are going to. Then within 30 days of him being the Prime Minister, he's, he's done that. He's done that, which, which you know, I feel sorry for, for grandparents and for the elderly out there that, that, that just have not got the money. So they're now going to have to, I don't, well, I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, and of course, he's going to find black holes and he's, he's got a tactic somewhere. But his whole manifesto was, we're not going to, the taxes are not going to be increased. And that's exactly what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, well, not tomorrow, because Parliament's not back for another week. But certainly Sorry, tomorrow, no, he's, he, he, certainly you, tomorrow, he's going to be paving the way uh, for potentially more bad news. I mean, you talked about the winter fuel allowance, and several people have texted in. I see Bill has texted in to say Starmer lied to the British public. He 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 never said he would stop the winter allowance. He said he would stop the boats. He hasn't. Um, he's uh, and Bill is suggesting that the next thing Starmer will do is reassess the council tax. But again, if you find yourself in a position where the cupboard is emptier than you thought it was and the breakdown economically is more grave than you thought it was, I mean, you do have to revise uh, the pledges that you made, don't you? You do, yes. But let's go back to honesty and integrity. If he's created a manifesto and received 16, approximately 16 something million votes based on the manifesto, uh, and he said, this is what I'm going to do. This is what not I'm going to do. And then within, within 30, 40 days, totally backtracks and reneges on what, what, he, what he's promised to do. I think it's just totally scandalous. And I'm, and I'm just ashamed. And I, and I hope he resigns. Keir Starmer is absolutely correct in doing what he's going to do. Telling the country how things are. Um, you're, some of your callers and some of the people that texted in who think Keir Starmer can um, somehow cure all the boat people, stop them coming across, and everything else in six weeks flat must be absolute morons. Well, I I think let's uh, let's, uh, not uh, insult the intelligence of people that have called in with a a different different opinion. We've had 14 years of the Tories doing um, stuff which has destroyed the country pretty much, and Keir Starmer's supposed to put all that right in six weeks flat. They are morons. Well, but Steve, the the argument that people are advancing is that that Keir Starmer, among other things, made pledges on the campaign trail, for example, with regard to the winter fuel allowance, that he then did reverse. I mean, he has already done uh, some U-turns, has he not? Uh, no, I can't remember him saying anything about the winter fuel allowance, other than the other than the um, locking it in, which he's going to do. Well, but not f- not for those people who are now no longer going to be eligible for the winter fuel allowance. Yes, but you're talking about the highest, um, or rather, the richest cohort in the country, aren't you? Well, the I pensioners. Think... They are. They are unfortunately for the pensioners the richest cohort in the country. Right, but not all of them are, and there well, are people that not, are definitely not all of them. But those who want it can apply for the total pound. It's just as simple as that. And in broader terms, uh, you think that Keir Starmer is right uh, to deliver a pretty gloomy message tomorrow, even though there's a risk that it I, leaves I people he's... people feeling feeling down about the future direction of the country. I think he's right to tell the people how things are. Simple as that. Why lie to the people? I did warn before the general election and before Labour got in of what the scenario will be if they were to get in. Uh, One of those was economy. The other one I gave hints on interest rates, but I'll leave that for another day. But as far as the economy goes, uh, when the Conservatives um, uh, came out... uh, we, our economy was uh, number one in the G7 in terms of uh, sort of performance and how things were going for the UK. Now, Labour, uh, what you've got to do is look at what the scenario is. Now Labour's in power. And you've got to look at the relationship that Labour has with other places like the US and also places in the Middle East. Now, the UK is exceedingly dependent on foreign direct investment. 
And I did give the warning that uh, Labour saying what they were about GB Energy and getting investment and that into new uh, renewable uh, uh, energy generation, that they'll find it incredibly difficult to actually get uh, investors to actually come into it. And even those investors that we have in the UK, uh, they've actually upset because going for windfall taxes on them, uh, they're unlikely to actually think about in doing more investment into energy renewals at the moment when you do that. But, but so, Robert, can I ask you what you think is the public impact of Keir Starmer saying to people tomorrow, as we know he is going to say, that things are going to get worse before they get better? What impact do you think that has uh, on the British national psyche? OK, well, the, when they realise that what he's saying is that basically they've mucked up the economy, the economy is going to go exceedingly low down here. Well, hang on, they have. They I mean, how to... can they have mucked up the economy? They've only been in office for five minutes. Yes, but when they're now in office, that relationship, we're not going to get the foreign direct investment that we probably would have got under the Conservatives from the US and the Middle East. Therefore, our economy will suffer. And that means tax rises, it means cutbacks in services and so forth, and increased energy pricing possibly because uh, we won't get that extra energy investment that we need to sort of get for AI, driving AI. If we can't create the energy in this country, we can't switch to AI technologies. That puts the UK way back behind things. We've got to make a move, and the whole thing of... Labour's strategy is totally, utterly wrong. We've got people in power now who nobody likes, including David Lammy. They've fallen out with everybody. He's been to India, came back empty-handed. There's a real situation in the UK now for the economy that Labour's taken us down. I think he's um, kind of taking the public for fools. Um, um, essentially what he's doing is managing people's expectations, yeah? And, of course, it's quite prudent for a government to point out the challenges, but um, what's going to happen, I believe, is that um, he, he's put it out there for, say, about four days even before the speech has been made, softened everybody up for it, so we're ready for it, so it's you know, we're kind of expecting it. And if you actually look at the macroeconomic picture right now, it's not exactly as bad as he he will make out. Um, migration figures are finally beginning to fall. And um, it, what he's inherited is, is not as bad as he's going to make it out. But what he will do, exactly what Nicola Sturgeon used to do, when everything, anything um, goes well, he will take the credit for it. And when anything goes wrong, he will blame the previous administration. Well, but that's politicians for you, isn't it, Lena? Yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. But I don't think the people are buying it this time around. We've had 14 years of being disillusioned, right? And he's come along and he's saying, oh, I'm going to be honest and I'm going to do this. Well, he's not being honest because he knew the figures before he came in. He deliberately didn't put it in the manifesto. It was all kept, you know, like under wraps. And then as soon as they get in, they they just have, as far as I'm concerned, they've just jettisoned their socialist principles and the pensioners taking the way, you know, the, 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 the um, fuel payment is the big, the beginning, the beginning of a lot worse to come.